Venus is nearly identical to Earth in weight, size, and chemical composition. It has a similar axis tilt and may even have had water on the surface at one time. Now, this similarity makes the study of Venus very important to us. You see, Venus is probably the best example of what has been termed the runaway greenhouse effect, an effect that could have drastic implications for life on planet Earth should it start here. The sun warms all planets to some degree. The amount of radiation each receives from the sun, plus the kind of materials composing its surface and the atmosphere, determine the planet's temperature. So, imagine two identical planets on an equal distance from the sun, one covered with shiny aluminum foil and the other painted flat black. After a time, the black planet will stabilize at a higher surface temperature than the shiny planet because it absorbs rather than reflects light. Now, to return to our comparison of Earth and Venus, the average temperature of Earth is 59 degrees Fahrenheit, and this temperature works in total harmony with the needs of life. Just enough sunlight is absorbed by the air and ground to maintain temperatures in which all living organisms can survive. The 900 degrees Fahrenheit temperature of Venus is deadly. Now, even if Venus were to orbit at the same distance as the Earth, it would maintain killing temperatures because the carbon dioxide in its atmosphere acts like a, a thermal blanket. Earth and Venus have the same amounts of carbon, but Venus carries most of it in the atmosphere as CO2, and Earth holds its carbon in the form of carbon at rocks. About a billion years ago, from the point of view of life as we know it, something went critically wrong on Venus. Something, possibly volcanoes out of control, released huge amounts of CO2 into the air. The new abundance of CO2 trapped the increased heat of the maturing sun and caused surface rocks to heat and give up more CO2. This began a cycle where more CO2 was released into the air to reflect more heat back to the surface and so on until Venus became the burning hell we know today. Here we see the true portrait of the second planet from the sun, the goddess of beauty. The fourth planet from the sun is Mars. Named after the Roman god of war, it is the only planet that when viewed with the unaided eye reveals a definite color, red. According to myth, soldiers slain on the battlefields were transported to Mars. Their spilled blood gave the planet its color. Mars has fascinated people since they first gazed upon it. But few went so far in their fascination as Percival Lowell a wealthy young American astronomer who built his own private observatory in the 1890s to study the red planet. Like other astronomers in his day, Lowell drew sketches of canals crisscrossing the planet's surface. Lowell believed these to be part of an intricate irrigation network, canals that could only have been built by intelligent life. It's a mystery why so many astronomers drew canal systems on Mars, Better telescopes and photographic technologies revealed no canals, or even canal remnants. Not even natural phenomena that might be interpreted as canals were found. But at the time, the evidence of these canals gathered by Lowell was enough to set off a furor of Mars speculation. We'll return to the Practical Guide to the Universe on the Learning Channel. We now return to the Practical Guide to the Universe on the Learning Channel. On the one hand, it was believed Mars was peopled by a good, if somewhat pitiful, race who were struggling desperately to stay alive by rooting water from the poles to the warmer equator. But on the other hand, it was thought Martians were evil, only waiting for a chance to take over Earth and enslave its inhabitants. Thanks to several probes and two interplanetary laboratories that landed on the surface of Mars, we now know that we won't find any massive canal structures, much less any little green men running around. But we still have some interesting questions about the red planet. Mars is surprisingly small, considering its mythical reputation. It's about half the size of the Earth and weighs only one-tenth as much. Mars is clearly made of much lighter elements than our home planet. Mars takes almost 700 Earth days to circle the sun, so its year lasts twice as long as ours. But its day lasts 24.4 hours, remarkably close to our own. 
In relation to the sun, Mars tilts on its axis to the same degree as the Earth, so it has similar seasonal changes. But Mars travels a more oval path around the sun than our planet does. This orbit means Mars' distance from the sun and its speed differ greatly at different times of the year, so its seasons are uneven. In the Martian north, for example, spring lasts 194 days, while fall lasts only 143. Mars has an atmosphere similar to our own, but very thin. The surface pressure there is comparable to the thin atmosphere 50,000 feet above the Earth. It doesn't have enough volume to keep a person alive, but it's not toxic, and it's similar to the chemical makeup of our own atmosphere. With proper equipment, we could compress the thin atmosphere of Mars and create breathable air, air that could be pumped into sealed domes on the planet's surface. The sealed domes would have to be heated, too. The warmest it gets on Mars is about 40 degrees, and the normal temperature usually hovers around the freezing temperature of carbon dioxide. That is the temperature of dry ice. Pioneers on the planet would have to be hardy souls indeed. Mars may have much to offer in its mineral wealth, but one material is more valuable than the others. Now, you might be thinking gold or platinum, but the substance is water. Without water, human habitation is extremely difficult to sustain. Scientists had speculated that there was water on Mars for a long time, but for hard evidence, they had to wait for the Mariner missions to map the Martian surface. The photographs sent back by the Mariner spacecraft clearly showed grooves, canyons, and valleys. A forceful flow of water must have made these formations. There is strong evidence that in the distant past on Mars, there was once a very warm, wet climate. And given that we believe that life requires a liquid environment and warmer conditions, it's conceivable that life did exist on the surface of Mars at one point in, in terms of primitive life forms. And so I would think the best recourse to search for life would be to look for archaeological signatures or, or fossils. The startling photograph outlines clearly the estuaries and deltas formed by some ancient river. A river that may have carried along its path the same chemistry for the creation of life as our early oceans. So if there was water, what happened to it? The planet's weak gravity may have let most of it in the form of vapor escape to space. Some is trapped in the polar caps, which contain water ice and carbon dioxide ice. A fair amount of it could still be underground. Water may be trapped in a permafrost layer just below the surface. What looked like mud flows around the sites of asteroid impact craters could have been formed by the melting and mixing of ice and Martian soil. In 1976, the Viking landers gave us the first ground level view of the surface. The cameras revealed a surface not covered in blood, as myths said, but a desert of stone and iron oxide dust. Mars is a rusting planet with a blue sky like our own. Mariner 9 revealed that Mars has the biggest volcano in the solar system. Olympus Mons is a mountain three times higher than Mount Everest, but shaped like a great bulging shield, as is its similar cousin here on Earth, the island of Hawaii. It has great cliffs, scoured gorges, and great basins. But huge global sandstorms can hide these features for weeks at a time. By Earth standards, Mars is a desert more severe than any on our planet. Its soil is at once frozen from below and fried from above. By the ultraviolet radiation, its atmosphere is too thin to stop. There are only traces of oxygen and no surface water. But for all this harshness, some scientists still believe life may yet be found on its surface. Um, there's no expectation of finding an underground civilization beneath the planet's crust. At best, the life of Mars would be microorganisms. They would be in the rocks of the soil between the two extremes of temperature and protected from radiation. If we find such creatures, it will be a fantastic discovery, a day of encouragement and a sign that we might inhabit this place of stark beauty as well. Who knows? It may be your children's destiny to become Martians. Mm -hmm.